if you've already started following the guidance I've been giving through the previous videos about what to eat and how to eat, you may have noticed that your blood sugar rises more than you expect after you take your insulin for just the carbs. That's because protein raises your blood sugar too. Not as much and not as fast, but it does raise it nonetheless. The only reason you haven't noticed until now is because carbs raise it so much more and so much faster that the protein effect is minimal in comparison. But once you cut those carbs out, suddenly protein is going to be the biggest impact on your blood sugars and you're going to notice that it makes your blood sugars rise. Most type 1s, unless you've been very recently diagnosed, you're still making some insulin, or maybe you're an adult onset diabetic, most type 1s need to bolus for protein. It is so, so important. Honestly, not bolusing for protein is one of the biggest pitfalls type 1 diabetics have when going low carb. I've heard so many stories of diabetics going low carb and saying, well, it didn't work for me. My blood sugar went up, my A1C went up, I just couldn't figure it out. Well, that's because they weren't bolusing for protein. If you do bolus for protein and you do it right, then you can expect very stable blood sugars from it. Because despite the fact that it does raise your blood sugar, it raises it much less. It raises it a lot slower, and so it's much easier to manage. Before we get into how, I want to put emphasis on the fact that protein works much slower than typical carbs. Carbs from breads, starches, and sweets are going to raise your blood sugar very high, very fast. On the other hand, protein, and also the slow-acting carbs from fibrous leafy greens, for example, the very low-carb foods that you're able to eat a little bit of, the carbs and protein from there affect you much more slowly, rather than your blood sugar going like this and like that. With a high-carb meal, with a low-carb meal, you can expect the rise to be much slower, much like this, and the insulin to be much like that. Instead of a peaked mountain, you have a rolling hill. And of course, that's going to be much easier for you to manage. And the thing is, the insulin you're using right now, if you don't know about R yet, is probably a very fast acting insulin, which is great for those high carb meals that spike your blood sugar very fast. But it's not so great for protein, which works much slower. You need a slower insulin. And that is where our insulin comes in. Our insulin is actually a generic insulin. It's been around for a long time. And in the States, in the United States, you can even find it at Walmart for $25 a vial without prescription in most states. So it's actually very available. And the cool thing about R, and the reason nobody recommends it right now, is that it works slower. It's not good for a high carb meal, but it is perfectly aligned for a low carb meal that is higher in protein, lower in carbs, maybe higher in fat. It's perfect for that hill rather than that huge spike from the carbs. And it is completely safe to boot. You may have heard some horror stories about diabetics who run out of options and they try our insulin because there's nothing else they can use and they end up having serious problems. Well, that's because they're trying our insulin with their high carb lifestyle and they think it's just like normal insulin when it's not. If you take any new medicine without knowing what it is or how to use it, you're going to have problems. But today I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about using R effectively. Because while it is too slow for high carb meals, it is perfect for low carb meals. And keep in mind, I am talking about medicine here. So just remember that this isn't actual medical advice from a doctor. This is just information I'm giving you. Anyways, using our insulin is fairly simple. You just need to realize that slower and work with it from there. To start out, Dr. Bernstein's diabetes solution recommends going with about one unit of R per two ounces of protein. And that's total protein. So eight ounces of steak, for example, would perhaps require four units of R. And that actually fits pretty well with me. It turns out that I split my dose two and a half to two and a half units. So five units total with eight ounces of steak. So that's pretty close for me. But again, that's just a starting point. If you decide to use it, you can start there, but you need to tinker with it and experiment and log and all the stuff I was talking about before until you get that bolus, until you figure out the exact dose that works for you. He also recommends 
taking your dose about four or five minutes before you eat because it just works that slowly. Now that's going to depend on what you eat and on how fast you metabolize this food. For example, in my case, if I just eat a steak, maybe have an egg with it, if I just eat a fully carnivore meal, then I can take my bolus about five minutes before I eat and I'll be just fine. Whereas if other situations, let's say for example, I'm having a very lean protein, such as chicken, that protein, that high amount of protein, that lower amount of fat is going to make your blood sugar rise faster. Because the thing with fat is that fat tampers the rise from protein very well. So leaner meats tend to make your blood sugar rise faster than fattier meats. So let's say I'm eating some chicken. If so, taking that dose right before it eats is not going to work so well. My blood sugar probably rise before the insulin kicks in, and it would be very wise to take that insulin before, or alternatively, take some fast acting insulin along with some R insulin. In fact, if I ever go to get some wings, for example, I'll do exactly that. I'll take some Humalog, and then also dose some R, so that way I'm covered for that initial rise in protein, and I'm going to be covered hours later when that protein's still in effect. It's going to vary depending on the situation and on how you are, but just keep that tip in mind. Keep timing in mind as something you can tinker when figuring out how to use our insulin, and also keep in mind the ability to use both our insulin and whatever fast-acting insulin you're using now. And if your meal is especially heavy in protein, like how I just mentioned I eat eight ounces of steak, you might want to consider not just taking one dose of R, but multiple doses of R, splitting your bolus, as in taking a dose of R before you eat, and then taking another dose of R maybe two or three hours later. That's exactly what I do when I eat my eight ounces of steak because it has a lot of protein in it. And when I do that, I'm actually able to keep very stable blood sugars because of that. If I just took the one dose of R, I'll notice my blood sugar will be fine for a couple hours and then it'll start rising up. So if you notice that when you eat, you might want to consider splitting your bolus. Again, another tool that you can tinker and work with in order to find that flat line. Now, if using R sounds scary or you just don't have any R available to you or you're just not comfortable with trying something new, that's fine. You can still use the insulin using now, but you'll have to keep how fast it works compared to how slow protein is in mind. You might want to consider taking that insulin a little bit after you eat, for example, or if you're on a pump, you can actually use a function called a square wave or a dual wave bolus, where it'll actually dose your insulin and pump it through you very slowly over time, over your few hours. And by doing that, you can actually find very stable blood sugars as well. Now, I consider our insulin being its slow profile to be ideal, but you can still work with these fast acting insulins just fine. You just gotta know how to do it, and you just gotta tinker with the timing, with splitting your bolus, with maybe using a function, which is a square dual if you have a pump. Tinker with all of that until you figure out exactly how to make it work for you. Speaking of pumps, you might be wondering, can I use our insulin pump? That'd be sure be convenient. Yes, you can, and I actually did for a while. It does have some drawbacks though. For one, our insulin is going to be the insulin used for your basal too, if you have it in your pump. It's going to be used for everything. And that means you're going to need to tinker your basal numbers because our insulin is not quite as strong as other fast acting insulins. You might need, you're going to have to keep that in mind. We'll get into testing and figure out your basal in another video. Also, you want to keep in mind that our insulin works a lot slower. So it's not going to be as effective for corrections as a faster acting insulin would. What I do right now is MDI, where I essentially use our insulin for meals. I use a fast acting insulin Humalog for corrections, and I use a long acting insulin Traceba for my basal. But you can still do it in a pump just fine. Just keep that in mind and maybe have some fascinating insulin on hand when you need to do a quick correction. Just some information to keep in mind. If you're having trouble voicing for protein now, consider R is very good for covering protein and is actually pretty safe and effective as well. Next, we'll get into figuring out your basal. After that, we'll get into correcting highs and lows. We'll see you there.